Welcome to the Whiskey Balls. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is... We're working on it. So... Almost. It... Just... <clears throat> what, um... I had whiskeys with a, I know, I had whiskeys like multiples for Friday's episode, which we're gonna shoot at the end. Okay. But I just realized that one of the Fridays would be cool to compare to this one, but that would make Friday's video only two whiskeys. Oh. So, do we just wanna start like mixing and matching every day? And no more? Cause look, let's be honest. 90% of the videos for, the, for 2022 right. are gonna be whiskeys that nobody can get. Like we get comments all, you know, people are starting calling this fucking Shepard. He only sends things people can't get. Here's the here's the reality. When we get done with Shepard's, go look at the shelves up there. Ninety percent right. of what we have in 2022, okay, cannot be gotten. Fine, premature. This was not planned to talk about it at all, but a plan for um, a review angle and approach on whiskeys that most people can get that is in the works. Not necessarily for this channel, though. Not this channel, no, no. Uh, this is the first episode that we have shot in 2022. That's right. So we're setting trajectory here. The yes. other stuff was shot before the holidays. That's right. Okay, hi. So new plan. We'll, here we we'll, go. We'll sort of figure out this year as we go, like we've done everything else on this channel. This may be the longest... Intro? Intro before we actually get into the, the bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll say one more thing as mm. you, as you uh, pour. Uh, if we start coughing uncontrollably, oh yeah, it's because the entire <laughs> tower has been sandblasted, and the dust is is real. Yeah. All right, these are both from William. Sh the two we're going to try today. These are both from William Shepard. Never go full Shepard. Full Shepard. <laughs> this is uh, we've done four spirits before. It's a guy who started a distillery in honor of four of his friends who died. Yeah. Uh, and it's honoring the military, and yeah. you know this one specifically was so, aimed at the cavalry scout unit. I'm, I'm looking at the back of the bottle, cavalry, and I'm looking at the color. Mm -hmm. I smelled this, and I immediately think, well, this is young. It's MGP. Oh, okay, hold and, a second. But no. it's corn whiskey. Oh, okay. But it's two years old, and in, in theory, I. Don't. But corn whiskey used oak. Okay, so corn whiskey. Mm -hmm. You say MGP, it's like, oh, here we go again. No, 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 that is usually like the, the bourbon, the high rye bourbon. Yeah. This corn whiskey, I don't, that's not really a common thing at all. Not as much, which is why it's easier for small distilleries to get their hands on it still. Okay. No one's demanding it. But it's, uh, and this one is used or uncharred oak barrels. Yeah. And so even though it's two years old, it's gonna have a reused barrel vibe to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Now we're gonna compare it to another one from the Oregon Acme people that we've had a couple from mm -hmm. that were like, oh, they're doing all the experimental craft weird stuff, but then you try it and you're like, hmm, not my thing. Yeah. But they have a corn whiskey as well. And so I thought, this is grain to glass, 100% Oregon. Flip. And this is Indiana. And as long as we're comparing corn whiskey, I mean, the comparative tasting, I think is going to be most relevant if we pull out the yellow corn. Yeah. I'm saying though. So here's the thing about the yellow corn. If I'm not mistaken, it's in the roof. <laughs> what is it? Oh, I see it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> wow, that's, that's a long way. That shelves pretty high up there. Yeah. It's a whole other situation. Yeah. All right, we'll get into right. this and we'll see if we need yeah. to pull out the yellow corn. So, um, I was like, just for the record, we are now six minutes in. And we still haven't, haven't had a sip of whiskey. Still haven't even hey, named welcome it. to the new year. Still haven't even named nosing notes. Four Spirits Distillery yeah. compared to the uh, Oregon Grain Growers brand, which we've done a couple things yeah. from. Uh, this is what they call their Acme Oregon Corn Whiskey. That is so much more lively and present on the nose. Yeah. There has to be a big proof difference. There isn't. This mm -hmm. 45%. My gosh, the new making. This is actually that. higher proof. Are you kidding me? That is insane to me. So. At least, wait, maybe not. Uh, maybe I'm thinking the other 45. one. No, it's 40. Okay, so this is lower proof. Okay, thank God. 40, 45. Okay. But still, not This much. is slightly lower proof. But okay. that is such a softer vanilla corn sweetness. On the MGP, I get. With a vanilla cream. Sweet buttercream. You got buttercream? I got buttercream. Because there is a cream. slight buttery note to it. It's like a buttercream frosting. The creaminess, though, is the most notable thing. That sweet mm -hmm. corn creaminess. 
A little bit of, du of grain dust. Mm -hmm. Could be sand dust. Could be sand dust. Yeah. That smells young, but also sweet and uh, smell smooth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, before I taste, nose on the acne. Punchy, man. Oh, so, yeah. So See, all of their stuff has that really pungent, wide cut, new make -y vibe. Okay, so if you've never smelled new make, it is going to be usually a lot more grain forward because it's so much closer to that original grain. It hasn't spent any time in the barrel to go through that mm -hmm. uh, experience with the charcoal. Um, and this, you say it's the wideness of the cuts? Yeah, it feels... That I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing. It feels like they went lower than I would have gone. Okay. Because I'm looking for the really brilliant middle sweet fruit notes that show up in corn. Mm -hmm. Do we know what kind of corn? Did you say? Uh, it's just an Oregon grown corn. Okay. Because that could have a lot to do with it. The varietal of corn. Um, I, you know, we did a whole episode on Whiskey Tribe Channel, the corn whiskey revelation, mm -hmm. and how just the type of corn that's used makes all of the difference. It's like night and day. There's no comparison. Yeah. The, I think yellow dent corn is the kind of corn that most distillers are using because um, it's so cheap and it's so classic. But if they're getting into different kinds of corn, that could absolutely be why we're just getting so much more liveliness and punchiness. And we're not getting like that soft, very familiar vanilla like we are on this uh, Four Spirits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's MGP. Just call it MGP. <laughs> uh, it, I, as I acclimate to the New makey notes. Yeah. I am getting a little more of that soft melon sweetness. It is like a, like a grainy, grassy melon. Yeah. Okay. That could turn into an, yeah, I don't know. All right, we'll we'll going into the scene. Yeah, me too. Yeah. This tastes exactly like it smells. Really soft. Almost a Jameson ethanol forward bite yeah. to it. Actually. Right? Where it's a little bitey. Yeah, yeah. But it actually tastes more like an Irish whiskey. Grain forward that, Irish whiskey. That, I'm, I'm going to say vanilla cream again. Mm -hmm. But again, that Irish comparison is good. That vanilla Irish note, that creaminess, that's in here. Take a Jameson and remove the shortbread pot still element. Okay. And so there's this like gaping hole where there should be the pot still note. Yeah. That rounder. I don't think this is made for a neat pour. Mm -mm. Uh, I think this could have a really attractive, friendly profile that would be really nice in cocktails. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it should be, for my right. references. Going anymore. back to Acme. Just that graininess, man. It's like a grain bin. It drinks soft. Mm -hmm. The nose is pungent, but it drinks soft, dry grain. And so all the melon notes are gone. The, there's like a crispness to it, a brightness that yeah. feels like maybe they went kind of, you say in the tails. They went too low. You, you, uh, you say in the tails, but that crispness, that brightness, yeah. for me, I equate that with what's in the heads. No, um, that's in the palate that you're getting a brightness, though. I think because it's proofed down enough that's leaving an ethanol. Okay. You're getting a brightness in the nose? Oh, on the taste. Oh, okay, yeah. On the taste. No, no, that's not, not going to be a head cut. That's just going to be this light... It, there's not a lot of depth to it, and so all the notes are kind of shiny and pokey and sharp. Mm -hmm. But around that, it's yeah. it's got soft. It's really hard to explain. It's it tastes like a really low proof sharp ethanol. Okay, which is what it is. So uh, they do they're doing the experimenting stuff, mm -hmm. which I dig. Even mm -hmm. you know if you get into this, it's like well I've had better things. I don't think that's the point. Mm -hmm. You want something that's just going to be nice no matter what. Yeah. I like they're they're going down the path of funky adventure. Let's see what happens. I right. dig it. Do they? Do you know if they offer a side by side of here's the corn whiskey new make, here's the corn whiskey aged fruit? Probably, but I don't. That would we be, haven't gotten one. That would be really cool. Yeah. To be able of to say okay, thing. here's the new make, here's what that used barrel does. Right. Uh, yeah. So between the two, honestly, just for. Relaxed, easy sipping. I'm going for oh yeah, MGP me too. Corn whiskey, but still. But uh, I'd I, rather just have a budget Jameson. I think I would only reach for this if I could do a side by side of what this experimental corn whiskey did with the barrel aged version. Yeah, Grizzly Nux O2. Man, finally decided to pull the trigger and have my first taste of whiskey. Wow. Nice. Unfortunately, it was a bottle of J.P. Weiser's Deluxe oh. that was in the liquor cabinet that was oh. left by a family member some years ago. Liquor store was closed, so what can you do? Had a taste, and it was sour. No taste at all. Just metallic rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Oh, 
goodness. I'll be sure to pick up something tomorrow. Uh, I've been looking at the Gibson's finest 12 rare or perhaps something else. Well, is, he must be in Canada because he's talking Canadian, Canadian whiskey whiskeys. left and right. Okay. Uh, uh, dude, and even with Gibson's, you're just going to get... Uh, is that Gibson's? I mean, no, this is the J.P. Weiser Deluxe. Oh. Yeah, actually, it's not that different <laughs> than the two-year-old MGP that we just tried. You know what? <laughs> so you, you did make a reference to the like uh, the Irish part of Jameson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you took out the shortbread, whatever. Yeah. Um, but it is like a hybrid of uh, a generic, an Irish and a Canadian, yeah. and that sweet corn. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Kind of what it is. All right, that's yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next tech, when are you guys going to respond to Matt Porter, the world's greatest whiskey? We did! I put that in there because it was on this channel. Right, right. When we first started talking about the, that instigated it, but yes. yeah, so it's we, live. Yes, yeah, it's live. It's all fun and games, good nature, ball busting, but responded to. Bring on the sweet meats, Matt. <laughs> the sweet meats. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if... We need to add more YouTube drama in our little no, we really do corner of YouTube. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I gotta tell you, I like the idea of experimentation. I think this would go in a cocktail. Yeah, but I'm see, reaching for a <laughs> lot of things before either of these. Me, me too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>